Okay, I've set a little alarm for myself, so hopefully it'll help me to keep to time. Um, so, as I say, we can send messages to control the, uh, the range and the domain, which saves us from having to go into the inspector window. Um, there are two other things we might want to consider in this respect. Um, first of all, that we uh, might not want the shape to change or at least to be shrunk when at least visually when we um, when we change the uh, size of the or the, the, the domain length or the region uh, sorry the, the range size at the moment as I say they're being squished or, or, or stretched we might want the shape to remain the same but just to be to happen over a different amount of time or to happen at you know, uh, the same shape in, uh, in terms of uh, range, but happen over a different range. Um, and so <coughs> um, we can use something else here. We've got set domain and set range instead of just domain and range. And if I, if I just switch the message around slightly, oops, set. I've got to move things about a bit. There we go. And then set to main and set to main. Okay, and notice what happens when I click them now. Um, I can click on set to main 5000 five and nothing appears to happen. However, if I hover my cursor over the beginning and the, the end, i.e., the last nodule, we'll notice the x axis now reads 5000. So we have actually changed the available length. If I change it back to 2,000, you'll see that again. So zero at the beginning, but now we have X reading 2,000. So we've changed the, um, the, uh, the, the available space of the table, if you like, or the function object, but we haven't changed the time over which it's going to... Oh, sorry, we've changed the amount of time it's going to happen. We haven't changed the shape. Um which I think is probably useful to us. It does mean that now, uh, well, at 2000, we have this sound. At 5000, we have this sound. And uh, equivalently, um, set range to 100 to 1000, that was what it was you just heard. At 200 to 500, We have an a, a similar shape, but obviously it's not occupying as much frequency difference. Um, and then one more thing that might be useful to you, uh, which is, uh, you know, obviously if you want to change these, you have to make lots and lots of different messages. So instead of that, what we will do is we will go back to our friend, the $1 uh, argument. And by doing that, we can actually get rid of one of these set domain objects because if I send a, uh, into, a, a number integer number box to there, um, then whatever number I send through via you know by means of this number box will be throughput. So I could write in four thousand. Whoops, that's forty thousand. That would take a long time. Um, and now if I press it, it will take four th four seconds to do. Or if I reduce that significantly to say under a second, or quite quite a lot under a second, nearly, um, we get a very short envelope. And I could do the same with the set range as well. In this case, I am going to put in a dollar one and a dollar two. We haven't come across a dollar two yet, and the dollar two means that we can have two um, arguments. So one, obviously, to dictate the lower part of the range and another to dictate the higher part of the range. It's just, I don't know, I'm okay for time, I think, yes. Um, here, of course, then I need a, f a list of numbers. Here we've just got one number coming in to, uh, to replace this dollar one, but now we need a number to replace the dollar one and the dollar two, and it accommodates a list of items in order to do that. And to do that, we're going to use, well, we could use pack and then uh, pack two items together. So I could use, um, I could use that and then two number integer boxes and connect those up. 
which would potentially be okay. Um, we could then put a bang, a button object between here and there, because remember that this left right hand inlet is a, a cold inlet, so nothing will happen until I send something into the left hand side. But now um, I can change this to, well, I can put this one at 10, and I could put this one at, uh, I don't know, uh, 900. Okay, um, and then notice that our range now goes from 10, which you can just about see amid the wires, and, uh, well, in this case, we've got it at 798, but I could increase this to 900. Okay, so we're able to control our range um, by by those means. So in this case, we get that, um, but I could change this to, say, 10,000. And that will give us something different. Um, so the uh, you know we we now um, we're we're now able to change these quite dynamically, and that could potentially be useful to us. I think. So do I ask you to do anything else in here? Uh, well, obviously I've got a rather neater version of all of that there, but I haven't gone into the messages in the example, so that will hopefully be useful. Okay, I'm going to make a new tutorial for the next part of the exercise.